What's going on guys? I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this wine caddy. Stay tuned. So I was recently asked to make what I'm gonna call a wine caddy. I suppose you could call it a serving tray as well. Basically it just transports wine and snacks from kitchen to table. I started out with four quarter knotty alder for this. You guys can use pretty much whatever you want. When I buy my lumber, it's already surfaced on three sides. So it's planed down to three quarters of an inch thick. This is really helpful if you don't have a planer or a joiner. All you gotta do is trim off one edge and cut it to length. I created a free downloadable SketchUp file for this project for you guys. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. It has all the measurements and everything, so it'll be really easy if you guys want to make one of these for yourself. For the frame, I decided to use pocket holes for the joinery. I drilled two holes in each end of the left and right pieces. This will allow me to connect them to the front and back. I laid out all the pieces for my frame, added some glue to the joints, and clamped it all together before driving in the pocket screws. If you guys are new to the channel and like these types of videos, it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe and hit that notification bell to be updated when I drop new videos. Also I will leave links, as always, in the video description below for you guys of all the tools and materials I use in this build, so be sure to check that out. Speaking of tools I like to use, these clamp-on squares are great. It's almost like having a second set of hands holding everything straight while you get the bigger clamps on. Fun fact for you guys, did you know that pocket hole joinery is over 300 years old? I'm not sure how accurate that is, but that's what a five minute Google search told me. And it's on the internet, so it has to be true, right? Either way, it's quick and simple, and it provides a good strong joint for a lot of applications. After the frame was done, I could turn my attention to the slats for the top and bottom. I took the stock over to the miter saw and cut it to length, then ripped it all to width at the table saw. While I'm doing that, I have a question for you guys. What other types of projects would you like to see me turn into YouTube videos? Leave me a comment below and let me know. It's important for me to know what you guys want to see so I can bring you more valuable content in the future. Thanks. Back to the build. Once I had the slats all cut, I could lay them out and attach them to the frame. It can be difficult to evenly space out things like this sometimes, especially if you don't know the measurements that should be between each slat. So to have a reference, I mark the center of each board on the ends and then attach the two end pieces with glue and brad nails. I got this tool a while back and it comes in really handy. It opens up like an accordion and has equal spacing between each point. So as long as you mark the centers and use that as reference, you'll always have equal spacing. I used the two outer slats as an anchor point and then once I had them in place, I just used one brad nail to tack them all down and then went to the other side and did the same. After I had everything tacked down, I could go back and fully secure all the slats in place. Flipping it over, I could start attaching the top slats, gluing and nailing on the outer ones first, and then attaching the inner ones with three quarter inch spacing. Cut out the holes for the glasses and bottles to sit in, I used a hole saw. You can get this whole kit for about 15 bucks on Amazon. I chose the size that would allow the bottle and glass to pass through and chucked it up in the drill. I measured from both sides and the top to get the hole where I wanted it and traced around the saw so I knew where to drill. 
The saw has a bit in the center that has to drill into something to keep the saw from walking. Since there's an open space between the slats, I had to come up with something to fill the void. I decided to use a scrap piece from the project and use double-sided tape to secure it underneath. Now this would have worked if the stock was a little bit thinner, but the bit just couldn't reach it. So I cut a piece to fill the gap and secured it, then measured and marked the center of the hole. I made sure to get the bit in the center on the mark and drilled away. I repeated the same process on the other side, but this time I put a support underneath the scrap as you can see there, and it made it a lot more stable. I used a mini roundover bit in my palm router to break over all the edges I could get to. Then I used a small sanding sponge to get to the ones I couldn't. I wish I could really sand that fast. I'd probably get a lot more done. I recently got a new sander, and this Mercaderos makes sanding so much more tolerable. If you guys are looking for a new higher-end sander, I definitely recommend it. Make sure you flush up all the edges and the ends. I got to use Walrus Oil's new furniture finish. They sent me some to try out, and I must say I really like the way it went on and the way it looked. And with that hand of lime, it smells good too. It's a polymerizing oil finish with all natural ingredients. The application was super easy. Just brush it on or wipe it on with a rag, come back in 24 hours, and wipe off all the excess. Once the finish was dry, just attach some simple handles to each side. And with that, this project is finished. I really appreciate you guys watching and I hope it inspires you to get out in the shop and make something. Please like and share if you found this video helpful and remember to leave me a comment below with video ideas. I'll see you guys on the next build.